It was so incredibly personal for me because when I read the script, I was like, I have to direct this movie because Sebastian's father is a, is a Sicilian immigrant. My mother is a Sicilian immigrant. And so when I read it, I just immediately felt such a deep personal connection to the characters, the world, the story, and I knew I had to direct it. So I worked with an incredible casting director named Amanda Mackey, who has, who has since passed away. This was her last film. and. You know, we put together the most incredible cast I have, I've, I could possibly imagine for this project. Everyone was just in their perfect place, and um, and working with them was such a joy. And so on set, we just were able to have fun and improvise and and find the scenes as we were as we were filming and. Um, and it was all led by Mr. De Niro, so uh, I feel really, really fortunate to have worked with a cast of this caliber. I mean, there's no, uh, there are no words. Like, he is a legend for a reason. He is incredibly gifted at what he does. He's so uh, collaborative, and he really trusted me, uh, and I'll, I'll never forget it. It's the, the opportunity of a lifetime. I think it's really meaningful for Sebastian, who's a Chicago boy and a Chicago comic, and it's such an integral part of his comedy to premiere this movie for him here, and I just, I think it's great. I, mean, I play Ellie, who is loosely based on Lana, his wife, um, who's now his wife, and they were dating, and I don't know, I, I love Sebastian, I loved, I knew when I, I'd met them because Sebastian worked on tag with me, and um, I'd, I'd met he and Lana briefly at this party, and I could tell immediately like they had this great connection, this great chemistry. So that was really important for me to bring into the relationship with Sebastian and I. We started filming. Um, everything. I mean, I remember I met her. I'd, I'd just flown back. I was in Australia working. I flew back, and it was my first in-person meeting. At, you know, it was like 2021, and I was like hadn't have an, hadn't had an in-person meeting, and I met her and. We had a three-hour meeting, and I was like, oh, God, she's great. And it really kind of made me love, I really wanted the movie then, because I was like, she's so cool. And it was great to see this young woman who was Sicilian literally be like, Bob, I need you to do this. And she was so confident. You know, it's Bob De Niro. So he's like one of, he's an icon. It's like one of the greatest living actors, and she was so great and he was so he he trusted her and supported her and loved her we all did and so I'm really proud she's she's a badass everybody get your ass back in the movie theater it's not you can see a movie at home but seeing a movie in a theater in an actual brick and mortar with like surround sound with a big it's better than your surround sound at home it's better I saw it for the first time in a movie theater and it just is better it's better in a movie theater. Get some popcorn. Get a Coke soda. Sometimes they sell beer. Have a beer if you don't, if you can. Enjoy it. Well, he um, they had asked me to read the script. I read it. I liked it. We had a reading, and I liked the director, Laura Teruso. Between Sebastian being from. Uh, his his background and Laura Trusa, her background in New York. Uh, I knew that I'd be in, in good company as far as the, what this was about and this uh, cultural setting, if you will. And um, that was it. So I decided to do it. Good. He was great, and I knew, you know, on his script, his story. It's a personal story with his father. Would be uh, special. Well, he helped me with all, you know, what, when we had to block, what you call block the scene, he'd help me, show me what I have to do, uh, and we'd figure out the, the dialogue in the scene and what, what the activity would be. He'd give me, and then when we kind of had an idea, he would show me, okay, this is what you do, blah, blah, blah. So we just figured it out, and rehearsed it, and shot it. Um, no, not advice at all. We just went through a script. You know, I was going through the script. Some of it, some um, scenes we were supposed to do some um, uh, phrases in Italian. He wanted to know how, how to, you know, to say it, and he, and he wanted to get it right. So he used to call me 
sometimes they call me at home. I went back at home and used to call me, uh, repeat what, I, you know. I said, go, I send him a video with me saying it. Then he used to call me, you know, a couple of times. He was in New York. He went to New York a couple of times. He used to call me. And I said, uh, uh, can I talk now? At uh, that time, I was eating pizza. I said, what are you doing? I said, I'm having pizza. <laughs> and he says, uh, oh, is there a bad moment? I said, why don't you give me a call? But 15 minutes later, let me finish my pizza. <laughs> and he called me back. It was very gracious, though. Very. I, I love that. I, I was teaching him, he wanted to know, it was a scene of in a 3D salon doing, supposed to be doing highlights. And he's so particular about it that I had to show him, he wanted to see how it was done. I was showing him and he said, get out of the way now, let me do it. <laughs> so I was, I was, you know, I said, well, okay, go ahead, do it. Be my guest. <laughs> and he did a good job. He, he really so particular. I always believed that he could do, I mean, he has the talent to be a comedian. And when he came to California, I, I, the first thing as a parent is, I told him, I says, uh, how long are you going to stay there? And he said, if I tell you that now, I'm, I'm defeated already. So he has the talent, his perseverance, stamina. You know, a lot of times he got rejected, whatever, but he'd stick around. And, and so now I figure there's nothing can stop him. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy to have my father here, my mother, my wife, her family, uh, my hometown. I left here 25 years ago pursuing a dream in Los Angeles to just do stand-up comedy. This wasn't really in the cards. So uh, to come and preview the, the, the movie here in Chicago, is, it's surreal. It's, it's, it's really overwhelming. Yeah, so I don't have the relationship with Robert De Niro where I would call him up on the phone and go, what are you doing on Saturday? It was not like that. Paul Weitz, who is the producer, got the script to De Niro, and he read it, wanted to hear it out loud, and uh, wanted. we got a bunch of actors to read it on a table read. After he heard it, he's like, yeah, I would love to do it. So next thing you know, we're in a Mobile, Alabama, shooting this movie, and uh, my dad's on set teaching Robert De Niro how to do a die job. So it's crazy. De Niro was picking his brains. How do you say this in Sicilian? How would you act here? How would you behave here? So. My dad was more of like a, a reference uh, than anything else, so I'm just glad he's, you know, my parents are around to enjoy this. I mean, a lot of parents, you know, I'm 50, and uh, some parents are not here to enjoy some of their kids' successes, so I'm just happy that they're all here. Yeah, no, I think uh, there were some improv moments here and there. It's not like we really went off script a lot, but uh, we played around, and uh, the cast was great. I mean, in between scenes, just goofing around with them, hanging out with Kim Cattrall, Leslie Bibb, Anders Holmes, Brett Dyer, uh, David is hysterical. So, yeah, I mean, it was a great, great cast. I mean, listen, I don't do this a lot. I mean, I'm stand-up is my gig. So to have these talented actors around me was definitely a plus. So when Laura came in and interviewed for the job, she came in with a whole visual display of what she saw for the characters wearing, where she saw this taking place. She really, really did a detailed job in presenting herself as the director. And she comes from the same cut of cloth I come from, Italian-American, you know, parents are Italian, she knew the world. I like to think of Italians like dolphins. We kind of have our own speak. Uh, so she, she, really, she really did an excellent job. Yeah, so I play this off-the-wall, preppy kind of jerk named Lucky, who is uh, the brother to Leslie's character, who Sebastian is trying to propose to. And uh, I don't make it any easier for him. Yeah. Total group effort, you know, uh, Bob sets the tone and, uh, and not in like a overbearing way, in a way where like everyone can relax around Robert De Niro, where he's like, it's not a big deal, let's just do what we do, let's have some fun. Yeah. I mean, this is the kind of movie you can take your kids to, your parents to, like it's a family movie, it's funny, and uh, you know, get out there and see it in person, laugh with other people. It feels very exciting, considering we shot the movie, what, in 2021, and it's now 2023 and it's coming out. It's very, very exciting. Happy to be here. We were brought into the movie uh, 
when it was starting to ramp up with Sebastian and asked if we might be able to help produce it. And from the script, it was just an amazing sort of story about family. It was very relatable. Personally, there are some similarities. Nothing similar between myself and Sebastian, but a little bit of the immigrant story. And it was very... Uh, just felt like it was a good time for a comedy like this too, right? Like it's been a minute since we've had a movie like this. I think they just fell in with each other really well. It, you know, it was sort of in the middle of COVID, so everyone had sort of had some time off. So it was exciting to come to set and be able to play with each other. And it was a lot of fun because while the script was great, there was opportunity for the occasional improv as well. And here's the thing, they had fun together. And I think that comes out on the screen. I think, I think if Sebastian wants it, he's got it there for him. He's very, very good in the movie. You know, he's in a TV show right now uh, as well. But I think if, if he's got the time, he has a very successful stand-up career. But certainly, he's got it. I feel pretty good. I feel excited to be in uh, Sebastian's hometown. I feel like he's always, he's sort of reps Italian, but you can always hear the Chicago accent in there. So I think this is as much a part of him as the Sicilian. So I, I love being here. Well, Sebastian is a guy who really like wears his heart on his sleeve. So he talks so much about personal experiences that are really kind of, uh, you know, it just had to really ask him questions about his father to find that he already has the funny, but underneath it all, there's so much heart that it comes from of like family and, he and, and, and his heritage and everything. So really it was kind of just uh, talk asking him about his life and sort of building the funny on top of the heart that was already there. With Robert De Niro coming into this movie, it was just insane because I think we all have uh, a parent that's a little bit annoying or a little bit, you know, can be on our case, but it's never been one of the greatest actors in the world. So when you have Robert De Niro playing a version of Sebastian's father who is kind of uh, coming at you with some intensity, it's like multiplied by the most charismatic man I've ever seen on camera. So it's almost like I would be watching from Video Village and both scared. I, I literally cried in the emotional scenes watching this man act. So it's really like having a parent played by the best actor in history is both amazing and also a little bit scary. <laughs> I really feel like we got so lucky with this cast just because every single character that we imagine, every, every person that uh, came into the movie really brought their own unique spin on characters that we were imagining. And I've seen some of the comments already that are saying that they really applaud us for not uh, you know, making typical like uh, waspy family, but really bringing heart to those characters. And I felt like everyone came into this with such a, a unique and uh, identified with the character, but then brought it to a level that made it jump off the page and not become just some superficial written character, but actually a real human character that different people from different parts of the world can connect with. I feel so lucky that we get to do this with a live audience. Obviously, the last couple years have been crazy, and for everything to come uh, to fruition, to be able to watch it in Sebastian's hometown with all of his real fans, and, and myself included, I just like can't wait to get in there and see like that Sebastian is more than a comedian. He's also a movie star. Well, I played Doug Collins, and he's this like, very gentle, spiritual, um, uh, yeah, yeah, like very socially awkward, kind of eccentric brother of uh, Leslie Bibb, who plays my sister. Um, yeah, and it was a great, I had a blast playing this guy. I loved, I loved the, how strange he was and uh, innocent and yeah, childlike. At that point, I had been working with him, like the one-on-one -on -one scene where I played the flute with him. That was like two weeks into shootings, luckily. So I felt comfortable with him at that point. But he's a very like collaborative, um, creative person. So it's, he, he, he sets the tone for a good environment. Yeah. Her family is Sicilian. And she, she knows that world, she understands that world, she's really funny. She's a great writer also, so she was giving us like really good improvised lines like from the, you know, from the cameras and just a perfect collaborator for, for this. And I, I actually hope I get to work with her again soon. I really hope I can. Well, my mom is a big Sex and the City fan, so when she found out that, um, when she found out that Kim Cattrall was my mom, she freaked out. It's, a, it's like a good like bring your family movie. It's really lighthearted, it's really, um, funny and emotional like I got teary-eyed and stuff and it's just yeah it's a beautiful movie and I, I just they don't make a lot of these comedies so like to get your family out and go to the theater it's like I want I hope that comes back more and I hope this movie can bring that it was great fun doing it and he was uh, it's so well written you know he's a really terrific writer he and Austin wrote this and uh, it was very very everybody loved it the minute they read it it's uh, I mean it's a Hollywood movie you know Robert De Niro and all that stuff but uh, but it, do you see it it doesn't it, it doesn't you don't feel manipulated right it's not like the music goes oh you know it's really it's there's something sort of really heartfelt about it 
right? <laughs> it was. Well, it wasn't switching. It's just, you know, you go from project to project. And this was a particularly well-written um, and fun project. And look at all the people I got to work with, Kim and Bob and him and, you know, Brett and uh, uh, Leslie. I mean, what, are you kidding me? I think we feel like it's a full circle moment, you know? This is where Sebastian started doing stand-up, and this is where he grew up, and he's played this market a bunch of times, selling out the United Center, doing record-breaking numbers, and here we are back home with his first feature film that he wrote and stars in. I think we knew that this was a story that was going to resonate because we saw in his stand-up that this immigrant American-Italian story really resonated with people. Um, he talks a lot about nostalgia. He talks about a time when things were better and you were closer to your family. And we felt that there was an audience that really craved wanting to see a comedy that had a lot of heart in it. And I really feel like About My Father is a love letter that Sebastian wrote for his father. Uh, well, De Niro, he worshipped De Niro as a kid, as many, as obviously many, many people did. I think what's interesting is, you know, he, he uh, got to work alongside of him in The Irishman with Martin Scorsese. And uh, then when we went and, and he did all the film junkets and press junkets and everything with him and, and Bob, and they really became friendly. And I think once he saw the script and saw the heart it had in it and knew Sebastian's work ethic, I think he knew that it was a good combo to come along. But it's certainly a dream come true for all of us. Uh, there was there was no other choice than Laura Teruso for this job. There we met every big director, and she came in with heart and heritage and a story and a point of view about it um, that nobody else even came close to. Oh, I love Chicago. I did a play here a number of years ago at the Goodman, and I had such a fantastic time. So it's lovely to be back here with a film that I so enjoyed making and I hope that the audience will enjoy watching. My character in uh, About My Father, her, her name is Tigger, and she's a tiger. Uh, she's a politician, she's, uh, she's tough, she's demanding, she's loving, she's overprotective, and uh, she is going to do whatever she can to get her own way. And then she meets Robert De Niro. He brought such incredible ease. He's such a consummate professional and actor. He's up for trying and experimenting in the scene with changing the dialogue and, you know, just finding the best way to tell the story. It was such a great pleasure. Well, I think when someone sends you a script and it says it's Robert De Niro playing a hairdresser, you got to read that. And if it makes you laugh out loud, you got to do it. So it was an easy choice. And uh, I have great memories, you know, of smoking a cigar with probably one of the sexiest men alive. This movie is an experience that you want to share with your family. Have some popcorn. Get comfy in a big old seat and watch a movie. And it's also to watch a comedy with an audience. You know, you, you laugh more, you enjoy it more. You get more sort of aware of what's funny. And uh, it's this show, when I, when I watched it, there was a couple, like, with a couple of friends, there was belly laughs. And I haven't had that in a long time. <laughs>